Dan and Amy. All right. Uh, we're talking about uh, the school funding imbroglio with the Senate moving to override Governor Rauner's a mandatory veto yesterday, despite the fact that, according to Illinois State Board of Education analysis, 97 percent of school districts receive more money under Rauner's a mandatory veto than they do under the Chicago Democrats plan to bail out Chicago again at everybody else's expense. For more on this, as his uh, the override effort moves to the House, we're pleased to be joined by our friend, State Representative Mark Batnick, Republican state rep from Plainfield. Mark, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me on. So uh, what about uh, the Senate action on Sunday in the wake of uh, these ISBE numbers that show 97 uh, percent of school districts win and no school district loses Monday under the governor's mandatory veto? And uh, what are the prospects for Democrats to woo a few Republicans that they need in the House to override the governor's veto uh, and finish the job started by Senate yesterday? Well, I, I, I hope it doesn't happen, but then again, that's what, what I hope is going to happen with the, uh, the tax increase in past. Um, though likely, we did have one Republican that represents Chicago vote for uh, SB1 originally, so it'll be interesting to see what happens now. But what, and I think you mentioned it early coming up to this, is that I'm surprised so many suburban Democratic legislators voted for SB1, which clearly just gains the system and directs a lot of money to Chicago, and that is at the expense of, uh, of, of suburban districts like the one I'm in. I'm just surprised at the lockstep support uh, for the, basically the Chicago bailout that I saw. Well, they're saying that the money going to CPS and the Chicago bailout, alleged bailout, or you, you say it's a bailout, others don't. They say that that money is going to be grandfathered in over time. Can you clarify that? I did, I have no idea. All I know is that they... Grandfather them in over time, they must be referring to that we keep giving more and more money yes, to exactly. the system under this. Um, it, look, I, and I think I mentioned this when, when I was on a few weeks ago about this, that there's like little issue after little issue after little issue where they game it to, to fudge the number of Chicago's way. For example, the whole harmless for um, school district versus population. Uh, Chicago Public Schools is losing population. Now, the money needs to go where the schools are or where, where the children are. And if some districts are growing and some districts are shrinking, you would think that at some point the money needs to go to the districts that are growing with the students. Yet somehow we made it the whole harmless per district, which helps Chicago. I can guarantee you that if Chicago was gaining, gaining students, the whole harmless would have been per student instead of per district. But mm-hmm. it's it, it layer after layer after layer, small things that they did that games the system for Chicago to get more money. Now, another piece of this that's been under negotiation and it's still pending to see if there's a deal that can be reached before the House moves to effort and override on perhaps on Wednesday is tax credit scholarships. The Chicago Tribune opined in support of tax credit scholarships uh, over the weekend, suggesting, you know, this is a rare opportunity for Illinois to actually become a national leader in providing choice in education through voluntary uh, donations and tax credits for said donations that fund scholarships for low- to middle-income families to have the same choice that the rich and the politically connected have? Well, I've certainly been a proponent of, of things like that. Um, it, it, it'd, be, it'd be interesting to see how much of a game-changer that would be, because when you look at the dollars spent per pupil, specifically in the city of Chicago, that we were going to ramp up and the quality of the education that they are getting or not getting uh, versus what the private sector is able to provide. It's certainly um, an interesting dichotomy. So uh, we'll see where negotiations go on that, but I think the most important thing that has to happen first is when we go back down on Wednesday, the other 50 Republicans need to hold firm and, and, and get a bill that's truly good for the state, not just good for one small section of the state. I presume you saw Ronner's interview uh, with Brett Baer on Friday and um, uh, dancing around the issue of Senate Bill 31, the sanctuary state legislation, which I know you voted against. It's on the governor's desk. What should he do? Uh, I believe it or not, I did not see his interview, other than the fact that I heard that, that he said we had a broken system uh, uh, several times. Yeah. You know, I, I, I didn't support the measure, so I would hope that the governor is the same camp. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens with that. But I, from the way it sounded with the interview, it sounds to me like he's going to be signing that bill. All right. Yeah. In fact, I, I heard I heard on the run up to this, you, you, you know, some clips, and I do want to sit down and and, and watch that uh, watch that interview longer. There, there certainly is a potential for an mandatory veto to make 
parts of it uh, a better bill. But, um, yeah, I'll be interesting to see what, what, what he does with that bill. He is State Representative Mark Batnick, Republican from Plainfield. Mark, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Coming up.